Hello and welcome. In this video, you are going to learn how you can add product to the cart using Ajax request. So after this, you are going to focus on JavaScript itself and learning how you can combine Vue.js and Shopify theme. So you will learn a lot about JavaScript and making your theme with a lot better user experience. So let's start. First of all, I did a little changes in the theme. You can check out the code on, on GitHub the in the description of the video. There is a link. I added the mini cart here. This is the mini cart. Currently, when you click open it, it is showing the text. So I will fill it with the actual product in the future videos. But for now, this is a mini card. It means if you're in a product page, you add a product to the card using Ajax, it should fill it here without ref refreshing the page and going to the card page. So let's do the add to card one in this video. Before I do that one, I'm going to open my shop and another tab also. And let's check out what we have in the card currently. I will come to the card page i'm going to remove this product so we do not have any card so to test like if the ajax request is working or not so let's start this video is going to be a little long but you will learn a lot about javascript and vue.js if i come to my file the only changes i did was i assigned the view to the window variable so i will have access to the vue.js in every file I, I create secondly i create a folder called components and every Vue.js component I will put in this folder so that way our folder structure will be nice and clean for the future so what we will we will create we will create a component for this portion of our code if you are a Vue.js developer you might uh, say well why we do not wrap everything around view and it's not working it might cause some issue in future you can give it a try it is the experience I share is based on creating like multiple themes for clients using Vue.js, that's why I'm doing this way. You can give it a try and I'm sure you will come back to what I'm doing now. So let's start. I will create a component here and I will give it a name. Mostly this is how you can you name your component in Vue.js with camel case, just the starting with camel case and I will give it a product form that view. I'm not going to use the view file. So why not we give it a JS file and we can import it. So what I will do is I will not create a view component. I will use inline component for this one. So this is a lot easy for me. Every component I have here, it is going to be like a selector in, in, in jQuery. If you know jQuery, you select something and you can modify it. But in view, it is a lot faster. And I, you will learn uh, uh, more about this one in a bit. So let's just, let's just start like selecting something. If I grab the selector and see how is the form name. This is my form and it has a clause called Shopify product team, product form. If I check out the form here, I already know where that is. It is in the snippet. If you have watched the previous video, you know we have extracted our code to a snippet, so it will be easy for us to manage. This is the form. This is a liquid code and it is generating a form for us. As you can see, this is the starting of the form and this is ending of the form, uh, as you can see here. And this is how it, Shopify is going to generate a form for you. You can have the form like the same way you can write it as HTML, but it is good to use the Shopify style of creating a form and you can give it a name. This is for the, let's say, product page. When you say uh, form product, it will dynamically understand that this is going to be an add to cart form and it is going to give you an action. So what is the action here? If you don't know about like backend stuff, action is where the data will be sent. It is going to be sent to this URL. We don't care about that one since we are using Ajax. I will show you where you will send it to, uh, to the Ajax uh, endpoint. So let's come to the code here. Now you know we have a selector. So how you are going to select in Vue.js? First of all, you define a variable. I'm going to use ZS6 like lit instead of war. So I'm going to give it a product form name here like this. And it is going to be a new instance of view. That's it. Now it will be a new instance of view. What view is going to have, view will accept an object and this object has a few re like required parameters. First is EL. EL is the element you are selecting. What you are selecting, you can say like it was product form and it was Shopify product form. So we can say Shopify product form and I will save it. So the selector is done. Now what else it needs? It needs a function called data. And data is where you store all your file here, all your data. It is going to store the where in ID, uh, it will store the quantity of the card, everything that you want, it will be stored in data. So it should always return 
an object. So this is how it works. Sounds fair like it is si simple and easy. It is a function. You don't need this one. And it should return an object. And this is an object. That's it. You can have multiple one of them. Maybe there is a section in Vue.js called methods. Methods is where you store all your functions. You can run all your function here and you can call it. So whenever you select something like product form, any element inside that one will be accessible here. If I come to the form here, now every element you have inside this one will be accessible in the product form.js here. I mean every single element of this one. So I will show you now how it is going to work. For now, if I come, I added the uh, pro product form JS, but we didn't include it in the app. So you know, this is if you add something to the product.js, then the, our compiler will understand it. Also, I am running the compiler uh, behind the scene. As you can see, this is the team watch and this is my NPM run watch. So both of them are running side by side and compiling my code. I'll comment a code and say view components. Uh, and in this section I will just import the view components again we will use the required and we will go to the stem directory where it is going it is going to the components directory and it will grab the product the product form .js. if I have written everything properly if I save it it should compile successfully which is successful it means it, this one should work fine for me now so if I come to my browser Currently, if you open view, there is no selector here. Let's refresh our page and see if everything is working fine. And we have a root element. Yes, it is here. If you select the root element, you have no data inside this one. So let's create some data here. The data that we need. If I come to the data, just create some uh, like objects, like properties here. First, I call it ID and by default, it says null, right? This is what we need, right? We need to store those information and I save it. It is going to compile it and it is going to take a little while to import this since I'm using a new Mac that's why it is going to fastly uh, uh, upload it to the server now if I select the root you have the ID equal to null now is the time to store this information here and we are going to add it to the cart now is the time to work on add to cart button so let's see how we can do this one if I come to the product dot form here scrolling down first of all this is a button and it is going to the type is submit if someone click on this one it is submitting our form first I will change this one I don't want to submit the form I don't want to refresh the page since this is a button do not go anywhere after that if someone click on you how you how you are handling the click in Vue.js just write at then write click and then it is going to call a function for you the same as JavaScript uh, like you have on click then Vue.js just write at click it is going to listen to a click listener I'm going to call a function called add to cart this function does not exist now but I will create the function now if I come to my product form this is the methods and this is the area you will write all your functions it is so clean here now you can say add to cart exactly the same function you don't have to uh, open the prompt like this uh, what 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 do you call that I don't remember <laughs> so you don't need to open this parenthesis and it is just fine if you're writing uh, down there for now you have your function how this is going to work this should send an Ajax request to Shopify with the proper data the only thing you need to send is the the where and ID and the quantity it sounds easy right the only thing that you need to send to Shopify for adding a product to cart is the variant ID and the quantity. So how you are going to know about the Shopify API? If you che if you uh, Google something, I know here is the link here. I'm not going to go to this one. So I will come to Bootstrap, and what you can say is you can say Shopify add to cart JS or something like that. Add to cart API, and the first result will come is this page here. So if you come to this page, they are going to say you can use jQuery. Uh, we, since we are not using jQuery, I'm using jQuery in my team, but not for the stuff that we are doing. We are using a uh, uh, Xios. I will show you now. So here is the one we need. If you send a post request to cart slash add.js, 
it requires two parameters the quantity and the id and this is going to add that product to your car behind the scene so how we are going to do this one we are going to use a library called xuse xuse is for sending ajax secrets and in most modern like web applications people use this one so all you have to do is install it it is so simple just come to your ide and i will open the terminal here again i will open a new one then you can paste this one and press install so it should not take much time just in a few seconds i will have it so it is installed now and now i'm going to add it into my app.js so here is how you do you can require it i have already written it here because before i record the video i have to do it before i do this one so everything should work fine you can import it here using require and then you can assign it to the window variable that way you will have access to xuse anywhere in your file okay how you're going to send ajax request it is very simple you can say xuse dot post that's it the post will accept two parameters the first parameter is where you are going to send this data it is going to be sent to the card slash it is uh, yeah it was card slash at dot js right the second parameter is which data you are going to send of course you are going to send our id here as you can see above so what if i put both of them in a form let's check out the example that they have in shopify this is one object right it is nice and clean i can do the same thing i can see form as object and then i can move my id above this one right it is so simple now now let's add another uh, property also we can call it quantity and currently the quantity is equal to one by default you know if you are not adding any product to the cart or if you are adding a product to the cart the quantity by default should be one fine it is one now this is the id and now how you are going to send that data you are going to say this dot form when you call this these always refer to your current like view instance you can say this dot add to cart which refer to the itself this dot form which refer to the data you have and this will grab all the data and it will put it here so before we do that one where this data come from there is something called v model v model can connect a f uh, like data with your javascript so the way it work is you are going to say whatever user type just assign it to a variable like in 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 jquery you are listening for the input if user type something you are going to listen for that one right so here it is going to be different okay it should not be a comma i got an error so it should be a comma it should not be a semicolon so that's it so now if i come to my product form here how i am going to tell the like vue.js grab this data and put it here the quantity whatever user update and this should be reactive the way you do this one you know this is the quantity field here that you have you can use v model here as i said v model will connect it it will accept a, a name what was the name quantity right you save it this name should match the name you have here and the same one for the id if i scroll up this is our select it has a name and it must have a v model also here what should be the v model for this one id if you save it for now let's come to the product page currently check out this one okay the id is equal to null and this is selected and the variant is like the quantity is one if i refresh my page i'll show you how reactive the vue.js is i will select the root as you can see this is my form it is an object the id is null because this is not selected if i select something from here it is not updating here currently it is updating but you cannot see that update here so let's check out this one the quantity here it is one do you think it is going to change as you are changing this one it should change itself but there is something wrong in our code if i check out the console page you can see the quantity is not defined here since we have changed our data structure a bit it has changed here also when you say id it assumes in your product you have exactly after return you have id we do not have id we have form then id then quantity so we have made a mistake here you should say form that id when you are using the v model again for the bottom one also you should say form dot quantity that way it is going to say okay our object is form 
dot id will refresh id and the dot quantity is the amount of it if i refresh this time i should not get any error in the console if we do not get any error so that's fine this one is for the favicon if i come to my view here this time it is object it is equal to empty if i select this one yes the id has been selected and here is the quantity if i change this one yes it changed here it means if i add to car is going to submit those information to the server which is fine so let's refresh the page now there is one issue by default no uh, the id is null so it, if it sends a null val null value it should it is not adding to the card how you are going to add a default value to this one so what you can do is you can say document uh let's do it in the browser like you can come here you can select this uh select option here and then you can grab the, the default value of that one and then you can add it to the id here first of all let's give it a uh, id so that we can identify it i'll give it an id of product underscore or no it should be variant id it is fine and now i'm going to come here and you can say document dot you can select it by id like document dot get element by id and then you can pass the id here and then dot value and it will grab the default value by default it has a default value in shopify so what was the id it was variant id if you save it let's wait a few seconds so until it uploaded since i don't know much about the mac uh, like shortcut i cannot pause the video as i am recording so that's why sometimes the video gets longer until i learn all the shortcuts of how i can pause the video while i'm not doing anything so let's see yeah by default it's selected it worked just fine if you refresh the page again by default it is selected and if i come to view select the root you can see this is working fine if you have question about how come we, i have a view tab here i have a uh, view extension here uh, you can start for the view dev tool in chrome and you can find it an extension you can install it and it will automatically detect if you are using vue.js so as you can see everything is working fine now add to cart should send my data to the cart you can learn more about Axios in the documentation, but as I said, it is the simplest way of sending an Ajax request. You can send a post request, the second parameter is the data, and it is going to come with two functions called then and catch. The then will come with the response uh, of success and catch will come with the response of error. You can copy this one and exactly replicate it here. And here is the then one. Okay, let me just put it in the indentation a little bit so everything should work fine now what we are going to say is send our form to the add the, to the cart and if it was success console.log the success one like the response one if there is an error console.log the error if i save it for now let's see everything is successful and let's add the product to the cart for now this is all we have to do but if i come to the console so i should see the error here first i will refresh my page and then uh, if you have any error so far i'll clean up everything so to i have to see the the response here now i will add a few more to the quantity add it to the cart it will come with 200 response 200 means success and this is the data the data uh, always contain the current product information like id it has the title and everything now it is in your card now the only thing we need display that in the card that like the mini card here also it should give you a notification of the product added to, to the cart that is all up to you but in the next video i'll show you how you can add a notification and how you can display those in the mini cart here i call it mini cart you can call it whatever you want but if i come to my cart page if i refresh it here as you can see the same product was added here so our ajax request is working fine now is the time to tell the user that your product has been added now you cannot say it was added and without letting them know that the product was added to the cart so uh, you need a notification or just open the mini cart and show the product exists here so that's it for this video i hope it has been informative it was a little long i hope you have learned something and i will see you in the next video